In this clip, I review a student's Docker file for using PHP with Apache and Alpine and give them advice on how to improve it. We're now doing a biker's file for Docker file. He's on PHP, doing the standard PHP Apache and has all of his apt gets in one. That looks great. Also, you'll notice with PHP that in order to configure different things and to add extensions into PHP, you have to use special commands in Docker. So he's doing that. That's great. Um, you have to add all these in. I might hard code, especially these libraries right here, definitely hard code the versions because that's exactly how I got bit on the, my PHP production project was, uh, I think it was, a, it was in a, a Postgres driver or a Mongo driver or something had a, a bug in it and it updated to not even a major release. It just updated to a minor release in one of our image builds and crashed production. So definitely hard code that. Uh, let's see. We got some uh, pear stuff or a uh, uh, peckle stuff rather. We've got compose installer and it looks like you're getting uh, whatever version is the latest version of Composer. And I know lately, uh, in the last couple of years, Composer has been pretty rapid on the versions, but I might hard code this if you're super concerned about versions. I might set an environment variable at the top to get that and then put it down here. Um, the, the rest of that looks good. And then you've got down here, you're setting some limits. So you are, uh, it looks like here you're hard coding uh, stuff inside of Zend and inside of PHP itself. So if you never need to change those, great. But um, I, I find that, you know, sometimes in, in my dev environment, I don't want a lot of these limits and settings really high, but I want them really high in production. So I'll often set these as environment variables. You've probably seen that in my PHP example repo. And then we get down here to Drupal and we set the Drupal version and we install Drupal. So it looks like, I don't know if that's the end of the file or if it didn't all make it. Yeah, so you've got Drupal at the end there. I would take those Drupal versions, throw them all the way at the top, right below the from. That, that way I know what all versions I'm installing uh, and that those, I keep those at the top. It's easier to read when they're all the way at the top. Uh, at first, it always makes sense to put the version with the block that you're using it in, but as you get more and more versions of things, like version of Composer, version of Drupal, all that stuff, yeah. Um, cool stuff. And so, yeah, and you're doing the curl right all here. You're cleaning up after yourself. Um, that looks great. That looks great there. And you're choning uh, as usual. we got to chone our directories and good stuff. I, I overall, I think this is a great Docker file. It's got a lot going on. Um, I don't know if you've considered separating out dev dependencies from production dependencies. If you have to deal with that, you might consider multi-stage in order to do that in production. Um, but other than that, it looks legit. Good job. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch.